Hey everybody, it's Gary Lucas, and I am back in New York City here on Thursday, November 12th, 2020 still. It seems like an endless, endless year, doesn't it? But uh, I'm happy to say it was a fairly uneventful journey. I did get a couple of questions at Dutch Immigration on the way out at Schiphol Airport when they said, well, how come we don't seem to... Did you have your passport stamped when you came in there? And I said, yeah, they... They stamped it, though they skipped two pages in there. It's pretty full, my passport. <laughs> and I got to get a new one this summer anyway. But eventually they found the stamp, so I was cleared as not being an international drug smuggler. No, I'm an international purveyor of music, uh, at, whether it be the smuggled variety, the Sammy's Dad variety, or the <laughs> hiding in plain sight variety. That's probably more a better description there. And... Uh, Anyway, I'm here to play for you, and uh, hope you enjoy.
a little medley of this and that and uh, uh, a little bit of Skip James uh, which I did a very nice version of I think with Peter Willems this fantastic Dutch acoustic bass player who's coming from a jazz award winning streak into working with little old me and uh, we had a fantastic time in the studio and I have to say I'm still buzzing uh, the very last day of the session was on Tuesday, right before I did that show in the evening. Which I got a post on YouTube, sorry, I'm a little late. And that a little jet lag still. And, uh, well, it was one of Peter's songs, and it was just beautiful. Uh, and I was playing electric guitar on this without effects or anything. And I, I just, I can't wait to be able to play this. Maybe he'll do a rough mix and I can post it, but it was great. Uh, but I came in last night... And it was so wonderful to be back with Caroline and Lulu. And Lulu just woke up. <laughs> Caroline's got her mask on. Yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> and here's a finger for you and a finger for you. Caroline is doing a, is, is, <laughs> is pulling my Jackie Mason impression out. 
uh, I don't know if you recall Jackie Mason, but he was banned famously on the Ed Sullivan Show. I saw the broadcast because it went out live. For those of you who don't live in the U.S. or really don't know from Ed Sullivan, it was it was like, you know, what, Sunday night at the London Palladium? Was it Saturday night? It was like the big national variety show uh, as presided over by the showbiz icon Ed Sullivan, who uh, a lot of people have done well with impressions of. He was, I mean, in the category of Richard Nixon insofar as identifiable gestures and a t tonal quality. And, uh, well, you know, if you really made it in showbiz, if you were invited to do a show. So Jackie Mason was this brash, young, orthodox Jewish comedian who had been a cantor, I believe, uh, within a, re a religious affiliation. And he kind of had the sideline in showbiz with, I mean, sort of early insult humor, kind of, but definitely on the Jewish tip. So anyway, he was in the middle of uh, his act on the show. They've never posted this, by the way, but I did see it. I lived to tell the tale, too. And uh, the, the producer, I think it was Bob Precht, who was Sullivan's brother-in-law, started giving him fingers, like one minute, two minutes, like this, which kind of flustered him, and he, he famously addressed the camera. He went, fingers, fingers, everybody's giving me fingers. So here's a finger for you and a finger for you. And he didn't give the middle finger, but, you know, the gesture was unmistakable. And Ed came out scowling and hugging himself, as he did characteristically, like, you'll never work on my show again. <laughs> and sure enough, Jackie was uh, banished to the hinterlands uh, of the Catskills, or whatever, you know, was his, like, uh, his silly season. But no, he kept thriving in showbiz, and eventually always forgiven, and he was invited back. But... Uh, in the tradition of Lenny Bruce, let's say, he did this on national TV before they had an ability to censor this stuff. <laughs> and uh, it, it just raises a smile for me to recall it right now. So where was I? Well, today somebody, I mean, without prompting from me, believe me, posted an appreciation of a 24-year-old oh, album of mine, a solo acoustic effort called Evangeline, which... You know, I mean, I'm proud of all of my my little efforts there. I mean, it's like hard to select one that I think is better than the other. I, th I like them all. But uh, that was a good one because it was me sans effects. Oh, maybe I turned on the juice in one live track near the end. Yeah, I guess I did. But essentially it was a solo acoustic album. And it got all sorts of great reviews. And I'll tell you another interesting thing. It got the pop pick of the week. In Billboard magazine, yes. The supposed, maybe still is, Bible of the music biz. Uh, go figure. Well, I think it might have had something to do with, it was released right after the, the untimely death of Jeff Buckley. And I was asked for some comments in a wrap-up obituary, and I guess they like what I said. So a few weeks later, this album came out, and... Uh, yeah, there it was. So I called up the guy who was then representing me. In fact, I was paying this guy. Something I would not advise any of you to do is like pay a manager, a monthly retainer. If they're not, if that's what the relationship boils down to, then you got to find somebody else. It just doesn't work that way. You know, he, these people are like, well, I'll make some calls here. You know, five hundred bucks, please. And uh, anyway, I called him up and I said, Bob, man, you know, it doesn't get any better than this with reviews. What do I do next? You know, I wanted to plow forward. <laughs> I wanted to, to uh, how did Zorn put it when I, he vetted my first album? He was telling me how Dave Douglas had emerged, <laughs> had risen up from the muck. Yeah, uh, okay, nice. Uh, so I was trying to, you know, to get to the top of that barrel of crabs. Skip James famously once referred to the music biz as a barrel of crabs, which I think is a pretty fair analogy. Anyway, so uh, this guy who shall remain nameless said, well, Gary, I guess I'd be a liar if I told you I knew what the next step was. Just keep sending me those 500 bucks every month, you know. And I fired him shortly thereafter, that because I was like, well, with, you know, a manager for hire like that, I'm not going to get anywhere, you know. Somebody should see definitely a way to capitalize on this, but... One, oh, yeah, Lulu agrees. <laughs> Here's Caroline coming back with 
with a hot <laughs> bucket of laundry. I did the washing <laughs> and the drying, and she did the fetching of laundry because I didn't want to conflict with the show. Yeah, I mean, I could keep delaying the show, but it's a delayed gratification for the fans, I don't think, is my forte. So, anyway, just something funny from that day. Anyway, here is something else that came in while I was gone that I ordered off a t Discogs. She's a great resource for rare records, probably better, to tell you the truth, than Amazon. You'll find way more bargains there, and they do source the world. This is a Russian copy of my album, which in America was called Coming Clean, and in Russia was titled Follow, after one of the songs. It has the same cover art, but it's got a Russian style, you know, faux Cyrillic lettering on the back. And uh, it was on Exotica Records. And I want to thank Andrei Borisov, a great guy, for issuing this. Uh, the, I had a heyday, you know, in Russia. I don't know if it would be possible to reachieve this nowadays, what with all the tension. And all I had a lively discussion coming back from JFK with a Jewish Russian immigrant cabbie about the relative merits of Putin. And I got to say, that an awful lot of Russians love Putin and don't like Gorbachev or uh, his successor. Uh, well, anyway, I digress. So, anyway, I don't know. I never met the bloke. What did uh, Keith Richards say? This is also one of those stories that always tickles me. When Keith was asked about his opinion of the death of Lady Diana Spencer, who so horribly died in that car crash in the tunnel in Paris, his famous riposte was, I don't know, I never met the bird. Good one, Keith. And uh, this so scandalized Elton John. He was like, oh, that Keith is such a bad boy. How dare he be so disrespectful to my friend. But I guess if you're a Keith Richard, you would think it was okay to say that. Now, I don't know. It was just words. So check this out because now I got two of them. And they're still in the, the original wrappers here. And if you're interested, just see my web page, my merch page at GaryLucas.com because, I mean, how cool is a Russian edition of an album? Not so easy to find. And in fact, in the day, I was in Russian Rolling Stone and did uh, some national shows playing live, had a lot of great fun, a lot of great adventures. And I, anyway, it'd be nice to play there again. I don't care about the geopolitical situation so much as I just like to play for warm and friendly people in my I have the best in, was playing with, uh, oh, uh, Future Sound of London. Yeah, I think they were called Amorphous Androgynous in this incarnation. Uh, or they let them just say Future Sound of London, a.k.a. No, Amorphous Androgynous Presents, or was it Future Sound of London Presents, Amorphous Androgynous, I don't remember. But it was me and a blind sitar UK uh, Indian Sitarist named Baluji Srivasta, very good player. And Gary Cobain, my buddy, who was one half of Future Sound of London with Brian Dugans. And uh, Gary was on turntables, I'm on guitars. Baluji's on sitar. And we played during the White Nights of St. Petersburg, 200 years celebrating that fantastic city, which was built on basically a swamp. Uh, sounds similar to Amsterdam in a way. And uh, it was in a soccer stadium, a big thing. We went on at two in the morning on the wide nights. So that meant that the sky never really got dark. It was kind of a purplish, mauvish color at that time. And it was pretty light for two in the morning. And then when we finished about four or five, we played for hours with a light show behind us, really cool stuff. When we finished, there was a line of people lined up to get autographs. I don't know what I had to sell them. Maybe just my signature. And uh, I remember that there were fans with their fists in the air going, Gary Lucas, I love you. I love you. You're the best. That is the kind of response that one always wants, isn't it, naturally? So I was right away saying to Gary on the plane out of there to, to uh, <laughs> we're going to Moscow, Gary, man, let's come back here and do this. Let's play more cities. And he was like, no, man, rock opera. Rock opera next. And uh, yeah, that's what... <laughs> We sort of did that. I don't know, he's doing it now. All right, Lulu, I'm coming. I have a very obstreperous little dog. 
But I digress. Anyway, don't forget on Exotica Records, this lovely album. And how shall we conclude? Well, I don't know. I think uh, I gotta get off. Rotate your phone. All right, so let's get a nice shot of the landing gear here. Okay. Yeah, back in the hood. And uh, okay, I was talking today with the with a guy all about beef heart and my beef heart adventures. So watch for that. I think it's coming out in the next issue of Uncut Magazine. Thank you, Tom Pinnock. Great talking with you. Yeah, we're showing him this beauty, which is Don's Flying Saucer. Circa Trout Mask Replica. Uh, one of my beloved uh, father figures, you would say, Don Van Vliet. And anyway, a, priv a privilege and a pleasure, by all the P's and L's. Uh, I'd love to play for you. I'll be here on Saturday. As always, your friend, Gary, please wear that damn mask. Don't listen to... <laughs> The, the idiots, the COVID idiots out there. We got to like get a handle on this thing, folks. It's something well beyond individual expression. At this point, it's like collective security for us as a human species. Okay, enough said. Love you guys, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye.